Today I'm going to show you how to paint a dapple gray horse, so let's get started. Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to start painting our dapple gray horse. I'm going to take you through how I paint this style of horse. One of the first things I did is I put a base coat on this horse last week. People ask me, what paints do you use? What do you do when you paint your horses? And there's no trick to it. I just go into Home Depot. I have Home Depot and Lowe's here in my area and I just pick out a nice gray. This happens to be like a blue gray. I always like that little bit of a blue tint and this one is absolute zero so the number on this is N490-1 and the name of it is absolute zero so it does have a little bit of a blue tint to it this will look really great uh, when we go to put our dapples on as far as dappling airbrush I used to do the different appliques like a like a stencil brush or like a piece of foam or that kind of thing and, and just put them on by hand and I've kind of gotten away from that and I like what the airbrush does it gives a little bit of a finer dapple to it a little bit more in my opinion realistic uh, look to it so we're going to be airbrushing this today and I'll take you through how I do that I've got some of my airbrush I've already got that all set up and I'm just going to give a couple of test runs here on my scrap piece of paper so we'll do that and uh, then we'll get started now as far as airbrushes go, I use Iwata. This is an, an Eclipse. I just bought this here about a year or so ago and uh, this does really really well. I have different ones that I use but I, I prefer this one. This, this for some reason has a great feel to it. As far as my compressors go, that's a little bit tricky. For years I've used the small self-contained, the small compressors in here because I want a real dry air. I didn't want to hook it into my main line because then I'm running all kinds of moisture traps and things. And that served me for a number of years but as I've gotten a little bit better with uh, airbrushing and things I wanted to, to kind of go one I guess one of the areas that has been frustrating with airbrushing for me is what I do a lot of guys that airbrush a lot of people that airbrush are doing smaller things and I, of course I'm doing a, a horse a large horse and I run out of air I sat down a few months ago and I started of course looking at YouTube channels and trying to find what a lot of other professionals are using as far as an airbrush uh, compressor and one gentleman he put out a, a video and it was really really helpful and he recommended getting a gallon tank and so he recommended this is from California Air Tools and I'll tell you this is a fantastic recommendation and it has a small one gallon tank to it and I found this my wife's office was getting rid of a bunch of furniture and this is just an old steel credenza that they were throwing out and I grabbed this and I put it on wheels so that I can push it out of the way clean my paint booth out and put it back in place and then I went ahead and I plumbed in my air compressor in the bottom and brought it out here through the side and then I put a switch up here that way I can turn it on and off without having to reach down underneath and, and doing that and this has really worked out well for me now I just got this air compressor so this is actually going to be about the first time that I've really used it on on a horse so I'm anxious to really try this I've done a few smaller things but this is the first time I'm really going to try 
using this airbrush and we'll see what what we get but it's super quiet right now it's all pumped up but you'll hear it come on and it's really really quiet you would think inside this steel credenza that it would be loud it's not it's just it's perfect so i'm really excited about that i just like putting up a scrap piece of paper and i like getting myself loosened up because we're going to be doing a lot of circles and really we do figure eights i try to to just do figure eights and connect all of my dappling together so i kind of try to get myself freed up and depending on if i'm doing a small horse a medium horse or a large horse dapple gray of course that's going to change the size of my dappling so i always try to find something that works well i start with a gray paint and i used to go right in and do black but that seems to be a little bit too aggressive to start. So I've just found a nice gray uh, paint. I'm just using Createx. Nothing again, nothing special. And I just kind of go in and get a feel for the size of the dappling I want to do. And again, it's all about figure eight. And don't worry if they're not perfectly round, you don't want them perfectly round because you can always go back in and once we do this I'll go back in with maybe some black and highlight some of the areas it just depends on on basically what the horse is telling me and how it wants to look and so this looks pretty good So let's head over to the horse and then we'll start laying this out now again i'm not going to get too concerned there's lots of times that i'm doing this and it just seems to be looking off and so i still have paint in my gun if that's the case i'll just come back in and paint over what i did and we'll start fresh again so no need to get too anxious about this at all you can always repaint it's just paint so let's get started Now, one of the first areas I like to start just to kind of, again, get myself loosened up and get my mind set on what I'm doing is let's just do a little bit here on the face. And we can do that by simply going in and hitting the nostrils. Then we can kind of test and see how our gun's reacting, how we're doing, and get ourselves warmed up. I always like to come in and, and bring out these shadow lines like behind the, the jaw and just start lightly just darkening everything and make that a little bit pronounced. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to start here. We're going to work our way around. Um, again, we could start with hooves. Another hooves would be a good area to start just to kind of get yourself relaxed, to get your mind focused on what you're going to do. And uh, that's what I try to do. I try to pick out spots. So like the nostrils, the eye, uh, we can go in here, hit the hooves, and we can do the markings on the, uh, the joints up here on the legs. Those are real easy areas that we can at least just start uh, getting ourselves loosened up a little bit before we start going in and doing the dapples. Every voice is different. Now that might be a little bit too much. That kind of kind of spit out there. And again, I've got paint in the gun. I'm not concerned. Let that dry. I can come back and just kind of tone that down a little bit, and uh, we'll just move on.
A lot of times too, I'll get a little bit of moisture trapped. I used to have one right here in my line that I can unscrew. I've taken that off because I've added more moisture traps where uh, the compressor comes out of my cabinet there. So periodically, you can always go down to your quilt and just kind of clean your gun out. That's a good area to do that because we're going to end up painting that black anyways. And overall too, what we're going to do is we're gonna start misting on a lot of this gray, really, really light. So we're gonna to tone this blue down a little bit and we can kind of go in and give it some shading, some darker uh, areas in here throughout, especially on the rump. We'll make that rump a little bit darker just by misting on this, this uh, gray paint that we can tone all of this down. So let's go ahead. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty relaxed. Let's go ahead and let's start working on our dappling and let's see if we can't get this neck and down in this area here dappled. In fact, I'm gonna take a minute here. I'm gonna grab my glasses, so give me one second. Okay, so as I've gotten older, I've discovered that uh, I never used to have to have glasses, uh, but I had to get glasses about five years ago for distance. The optometrist, the doctor, told me, he says, yeah, he says, you're, you're going to need glasses. He says, eventually you're going to see that, that things up close are not going to be that great either so you're going to need some readers so he recommended some cheap readers so it's amazing <laughs> i still am amazed because growing up i'm 55 years old in fact i just turned 55 uh june 3rd uh, you know all of my life i've never had to wear glasses and i always thought i was okay up until the point i got them and then it's like oh my gosh everything's hd it's just high definition so i always laugh and when i even put these on and i'm up close it's like oh my gosh Look at what I've been missing all of these all of these years. So, okay. Anyways, let's get back to it here. Just a series of figure eights, and as I go closer up in some areas, I let off the pressure and I continue to just go in figure eights, but I want that to be a little bit lighter and to just kind of fade into the body of the horse. And it's up to you how many baffles or what your horse is going to look like. back and watch after I videotape myself. I'll go back when I start to edit my 
videos, you'll see I always have my mouth hanging in one direction. I guess that helps, especially if you bite your tongue or hold your tongue out. Now see, I'm, what I'm doing there is my gun, I can feel as I let off the pressure, I don't know if the paint is kind of drying inside the gun because I'm not getting as much paint out. And so I'll go down to the hoof and throw that trigger back to get the paint back out again and get it flowing. And then it seems to work pretty good. It's a series of figure eights is all this is. And you can kind of go back up the end, darken some areas, get those areas out. It's amazing the control you can have with an airbrush. Look at some of these just really, really faint and you can hardly see it. But yet when we go to put our clear coat on, you're going to see even those areas that we faded. Those dapples are going to pop out.
Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going in, like I said earlier, and I'm just going to start misting on some of this gray, tone down uh, some of the blue that's coming through, and kind of give this horse a little bit of character. And I'm always going back. And as the paint dries in some areas, I'll go back and just kind of define that, go over it again, define a little bit more. We're just going to continually just work our way right around the horse, so we may go around a couple of times here. Now some dapple grays have a little bit of a pink muzzle, a light muzzle in here. Some have a little bit of a dark. Again, it's up to you. I do them either way. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of pink in here, some highlights. I'll add maybe a lot of pink in here. Sometimes I make the nostrils a little bit more pink. It's all up to you. Uh, this one, I think I'm just going to do all gray. I think that's kind of what the customer would like. And so I'm going to stick with more grays and darks. Again, just kind of go in and continually just add layers as this paint dries. And again, I haven't changed out the color. This is all still gray. I'll just continually just keep adding layers and, and define some areas, but define some of these dapples. bring you over here and I'll set you up on this side so we'll start working on the back part of our horse.
Now maybe you can see over here on this hoof, and this is what I was talking about, as I'm dappling and I'm pulling back on my, on my airflow and my paint flow, sometimes it feels like the paint might be drying a little bit because as I'm pulling back, I'm uh, not getting any paint coming out, and then all of a sudden it may come out in one big, you know, splat. And so what I try to do is, like the hoof is a perfect area where I can get my paint flowing again, and then I can come back in and then lightly pull back on the, on the uh, trigger, and everything seems to be coming and flowing nice. So again, just a little tip. You know, find an area here in the uh, in the joint area, or especially on the hoof, and just kind of clean your gun out. Just hit it, open it all the way up, get some paint flown, and then you can come back in and start doing your your detail work. See, it's starting to, it's not flowing as nice. So I just kind of hit the back hook here, get the paint flowing again.
I have the gray part of the dappling done on my horse, and so now I've got black loaded up in my airbrush gun, and I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna lightly highlight just some areas. I'm not gonna do them all. I'm just gonna go in and, and bring out some of the darker areas. And again, I'm gonna go into the nostrils, I'm gonna hit the eyes. I'm just gonna go around this horse again, hit the hooves, and just make this horse stand out a little bit more. And you'll see the difference, what I'm talking about. One thing I noticed while I'm filming here, or videoing, is there's a line uh, going up through the, the camera lens. So I know that's bothering me, it's gotta be bothering you. I'm not exactly sure why that's doing that. It must have something to do with being in the paint booth and the lighting, maybe the lighting being a little bit lower. So I'm gonna have to read up on that and figure out how to reset that or maybe there's a setting or maybe somebody out there knows uh, how to set the GoPro um, so that we don't get that line constantly going up through there. So I apologize for that. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can do with it at this moment, but I'll, I'll work on it. Trust me. So anyways, I've got my black in my gun and I'm just going to go in. I'm going to start again with my nostrils, with the ears, with the, with the eyes, and just kind of, again, get a feel for the paint, get a feel for how everything is spraying. It's really humid, uh, humid out here today and I've got the window open. Well, there's not much we can do about that, but uh, let's go ahead. Let's get into it. I'm not, I'm not going in, I'm not doing all of the dappling. I just want to pick out a couple of areas that are already somewhat dark and just kind of highlight those and bring them out a little bit more. That's all I'm doing.
Well, there we go. There's our horse completely painted. I'm going to let this dry and tomorrow I'll be able to come in here and start clear coating. I've already got our rocker all stained and it's ready to go so we'll be able to easily come in here and get everything clear coated tomorrow and then we can move on to final assembly but i'll take you around here i'll grab the camera and take you around slowly so i can show you i apologize i'm sweating and uh i'm gonna get cleaned up and i'm gonna get a shower uh right after this but uh, uh we'll go ahead and i'll take you around the horse i'm going to show you how i just went in it's just some areas not very many and just kind of highlighted and brought that black out because again i'm going to put a saddle and bridle and everything and i keep that in in my head that's really going to finish this off and just make everything kind of come together and really make it pop but uh let me grab the camera and i'll walk you around and show you how i did this starting with the front again you know the dappling I just did a few areas I didn't do all of them because again that finish when I go to stain when I go to clear coat all of this this is really going to make even these faint even this faint dappling really come out I can see the line going up through the through the uh, camera lens here again I apologize that dark line I, I'll work on that and try to get that figure out the setting and get that removed but there you go there's a dapple gray all painted and ready for clear There's another one that's down. Our dapple gray is finished and it's ready to go home. All I need to do now is build a crate, get it crated up, and get it sent on its way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this dapple gray horse. And if you did, think about subscribing and also give this a thumbs up. You can check me out on Instagram at Greenfield Woodworks and check me out on my website at greenfieldwoodworks.com. Of course, I have a Facebook page too, Greenfield Woodworks. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you here at the shop next week.